How's it going? We're back with another tutorial. Access Virus TI again. We're going to be sticking with the trance theme that I had last week when I showed you how to make that trance pluck. But today I'm going to be showing you how to make uh, a super saw trance lead. Okay, I'll show you the sound and then uh, I'll show you how I made it. Okay, there it is, really rich, really big super saw sound. Um, if you're not subscribed already to our YouTube channel, make sure you check it out. It's youtube.com forward slash adsrtuts. Okay, right, let's show you how I do it then. So, init the patch. Oscillator 1 and 2 are both a hypersaw. This is where we get the really rich saw sound from. What a hypersaw does, it's unique to the virus. It gives you the chance to dial in eight saw waves on each oscillator. If you push them both around to the right, that's what you get. And then you've got the option to detune de each one of those saw waves separate from each other. As you push your detune, you, it shows you on the graphic them getting wider apart, which is in effect what it's doing. So we want to detune this one to 84, detune this one to about 76. Slightly different from each other. We don't want to sync the two oscillators together, we want them to remain separate but and slightly detune from each other. Just pull this detune knob down here, we don't need to do this because when you open the hypersaw you get its own dedicated detune box. The only thing we need to do for the oscillator common is just push the phase in it up to about 9 o'clock. Oscillator 3 we use as well, yet another saw wave. Push this up to about plus 12 semitones, 1 octave, and set the detune to about 12 o'clock. Okay, I'll show you it, just these three oscillators, nothing else. Okay, you can hear it start coming together already. So, um, what do we need to do now? We'll uh, keep the oscillator 1, 2 balance dead centre, so it's the same amount coming from each uh, oscillator. We do use a bit of noise for this. We're going to modulate this later on with an envelope, but for now, just keep it there, just underneath the V, and turn the noise colour all the way to the right. We want it as bright as we can. Punch intensity, turn that all the way around, then just pull it back slightly to about 90%. We use a sub oscillator for this as well. What this does is it creates an extra oscillator one octave lower than oscillator one. It just helps beef the sound up a little bit. We use quite a lot of this as well. Push the volume up till it's just above the C. A little bit of ring modulation we use as well. Push this up just above the G. Unison mode. We set this to twin. That means two. What we did is um, unison, it, uh, it sort of dials, dials in an extra instance of all these oscillators and that. So it's in effect you've got double the thickness of everything that you're using. If you set it to three, then you've got three of them. You set it to four and so on. So we only used it for twin. And we've got a chance to detune these extra oscillators that it's making for you as well. Well, voices. Set the detune to about 68, 69. Pan spread all the way around to about 3 o'clock. And the LFO phase to about 12 o'clock. What well, the pan spread, it pushes new, these new voices that the unison gives out to the uh, side of the audio spectrum, left and right. Okay, so I'll show you now when the oscillator section is done. Quite a rich sound already, but it's going to get better with the filters and the effects and that. So, filter section. Keep this on a low pass. Pull the cutoff down to about... 103, 104, we just wanted to get rid of the really, really high frequencies just to stop any hissing or any unwanted frequencies. We are going to use the filter envelope to modulate this. Keep it on positive, push it up to about 10 o'clock. The resonance, about the same, between 9 and 10 o'clock. Okay, we've set up the filter envelope now, seeing as we've uh, dialed in some envelope amount. Push the attack out, it was a slightly, just past that little dot at zero. Push the Keep the decay where it is actually. Push the sustain level round to about 1 o'clock. 
pull the slope back to about 10 o'clock and keep the release all the way out. Okay, filter 2, we use a band stop. This is uh, a lot different to a low-pass filter, obviously. We're not going to use this to really control the shape of the sound like we do the low-pass filter. What we are going to do with this is we're going to modulate it later on with an LFO to pretty much do what I'm doing now. I'll move that, move that stopped band up and down. So yeah, I'll show you what it sounds like just before, so you can uh, get a grip with what we're going to do. <laughs> Creates sort of a phasing effect. It's a real neat little trick. This is because uh, when you use an LFO to do it, you can uh, control the rate at which you want the phasing. So yeah, set the cutoff for now to about minus 14, minus 15, minus 16, something like that. We do use a bit of saturation on the filter section as well, just a bit of soft saturation. Keep the uh, mix between the oscillator volume and saturation dead center. The amp envelope again didn't really do much with it. Just pull the decay down slightly. Pull the sustain down to about the same amount, about 3 o'clock. Keep the slope where it is. Give it a bit of release to about 11 o'clock. Okay, and that is it for the filter section. I'll set up this LFO now that I was talking about to uh, control this cutoff of uh, filter 2. So if we go to the LFO section, um, LFO 2 has dedicated knobs for the cutoff of both filter 1 and filter 2. You don't need to set up no routing or nothing. All you do is just dial in the amount that you want. We want this to go positive from the low cutoff point where it is up to the top. So we'll go back into it. So we'll push it positive. About there in between 2 and 3 o'clock is perfect. I'll change this to a sine wave because I wanted it to be quite smooth. I change the clock to 4 over 1. This means it's going to take 4 bars for it to do a full cycle of this sine wave. So it's really, really subtle phasing that you're going to use, but you can still hear it beyond the, uh, beyond the oscillators and that. Push the trigger phase all the way around to maximum. This means every time you press a key, it's going to reset this uh, phasing cycle. Okay, that is it for the LFO. I'll show you it quick. You probably won't be able to hear it because it is quite subtle, but I'll show you it anyway. you can hear it, it's just sort of phasing towards the end of those longer notes that I've got in the MIDI clip. Okay, FX1, I use the analog boost for this. This is brilliant, this is the best one out of all of these, I use it on most patch patches, apart from the speaker cabinet and analog boost, they're my two favourites. This tune lets you to pretty much dial in whereabouts you want this analog boost to be. And I wanted it to sort of sit in the mid section, so I pushed it to about 10 o'clock. And use quite a bit of it, push it all the way around to about in between three and four o'clock. I'll play it quick and I'll pull it in and out so you can hear what it's doing. You can really hear it, as I say, uh, warming the mids up. Don't use any chorus, we don't use any phaser because I've set that LFO to that band stop to do a little bit of phasing. Distortion I did use was a Curry Overdrive. Curry, Curry Overdrive. Okay, pull the cut off of the mix back to about 10 o'clock and push the drive around to about 1 o'clock. This high cut is the same as the tune on the analog. It, it, it pretty much is, enables you to aim where you want it. It cuts out the highs the further you go around and then just aims it at the mid part. So I wanted it aimed at the mids pretty much as I did the analog boost, just to sort of warm it up a bit. So I pushed the cut off up to about 10 o'clock. Filter bank, I used frequency shift. Right, this is a drastic effect. This is you, If you're going to use this on something like this, you really need to be careful. Just use a very, very small amount. Why I wanted to use this was just to add a little bit of a tinny ping at the start of the notes. So I kept the frequency as it was, pulled the stereo phase back slightly, pushed these shapes, both of them the same, round to about 68%. OK, 
Okay, uh, you wouldn't believe it, that tiny little bit, you will be able to hear it. As I said, just sort of a, a metally sort of ping at the start of the notes. It, it just sounds nice with sort of, uh, saw waves. Okay, a bit of EQ, and I pushed the gain up on the lows and the mids and the highs just to boost everything. I pushed the gain of the mids up to about six, six and a half. The lows ever slightly to three. The highs pretty much the same as the mids, six, six and a half. So yeah, that is it for FX1. FX2. I use delay and reverb again just to make the sound sound even wider. Turn the delay on. Kept it on a simple delay. I turned the clock to 1 over 6. I pushed the feedback up to about 9 o'clock. I changed the LFO to a sine wave. It's, uh, it's a lot, lot smoother. I always try and use a sine wave up on an LFO if I can. I pushed the rate of the LFO up to about 10 o'clock. The depth to about 9 o'clock, about 18%. This is the L an LFO running through the delay. Okay, I'll show you just the delay. Okay, a bit of reverb then as well. Turn it on. Keep it on minus 21.1 dB. I wanted quite a large reverb for this, so I chose Hall. As you go down, they get, they get uh, bigger rooms, hence bigger reverb. Ambience is the smallest, then a small room, large room, then a Hall. Pull the decay back to about 10 o'clock. Keep the damping on about 9 o'clock. Didn't use any pre-delay whatsoever. Just sort of let the reverb run itself. So yeah, this is it with the reverb. So yeah, that's pretty much the sound done. The only modulation I did in the matrix section was I used the filter envelope that we set up earlier to control the noise volume, as I said at the start. This means it's just going to be a pluck of noise at the start of the sound rather than it hissing all the way through it. It, it combines with that f um, frequency shift. You can, you can hear it at the start of the sound when it comes in. It's like a little hi-hat hitting. So yeah, turn that on, push the volume of this noise volume up to about three quarters of the way. Okay, you should be able to hear this clicking in the noise at the start of the notes. So yeah, that is it. That is the patch done. I'll, uh, I'll show you it with a little build. It's just sort of a little build up and then a breakdown to show you what you can use it for. So that is it, the hyper sort, super sort, trance lead. Okay, there it is. So, um, thanks for watching as always. Uh, any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Alright, I hope you learnt something. Cheers.